I heard that you had 300 people earlier, and then I came, and now you're down to like 55. So clearly, I am a sought-after speaker, right? I don't even like, what the heck? And, you know, in my real life, before I became um, the Vice President of Student Affairs, I was a Director of Athletics at Ryerson. And before that, I was a coach and a professor. I'm a sports psychologist by trade. And uh, so I coached world championships, Olympic qualifiers, NBA national championships, all that sort of stuff. And when I work with high performing athletes, the number one thing that people always ask me is like, what is it? What is it? What is it? What, is it? Uh, what leads to success? It's because at the corporate level, high performing teams, it's always the same thing, right? It's self confidence. And so a lot of folks would think, oh, the skill of academic success is always about how many hours you work or how many this and all that. But I'm telling you, all of that falls aside if you go in and you just, oh my God, you lose this genuine belief in your ability. When I talk about self-confidence, at whatever level it is, it's this genuine belief in your ability to accomplish the task at hand. You could study all you want. You could have all the best references. You can do all the things. But when you come in and you're in the lab and you're like, oh, and you freeze because fear washes over you, you stop. You don't put your hand up. You don't put yourself forward. You don't put your ideas forward. And all of a sudden, you become average or forgotten. And so today, what I want to talk to you about is make sure we all have the same definition. The same definition I use, whether it's for academics, for high-performing athletes, for corporate CEOs, is in order to have this genuine belief in yourself, you have to really start with ground one. Ground one is this self-belief. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, okay, you went to the Celine Dion concert in Las Vegas, and all of a sudden the, they say she, she's about to close it down and she's got food poisoning. So they come out and say, Celine Dion can't go on anymore, folks. It's not going to happen. And you put up your hand and say, I've watched Titanic a hundred times. Let me do the closing number. <laughs> that might be a little delusional, right? You can't show up. Oh, okay, I got this. I got this test. I got it. No. Repetition, repetition, repetition. Whether you talk about Gladwell's 10,000 hour rule, whatever it is, at the end of the day, it can't be novel to you. Academic success, if you think it's novel, I think if you just show up and think you're going to succeed, it doesn't work. And you've clearly done that because you got into grad school. But sometimes we forget about the things that are beyond just the hours of studying, the hours of repetition. Is What are the little things that set you up for success? What are the things that are routine and ordinary that you can use? Because at the end of the day, you want repetition, 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 because you don't want to empty your focus bucket. Any psychologists in here? One or two? So do you know about Nidifer's thing about attention and focus and all that? We all have a certain amount of focus, right? Think about this as your focus bucket. The more novel a task, the more we empty our focus bucket. The more routine the task, the smaller the NPR focus bucket. What does that mean for academic success? Any sports fans here remember Michigan, Chris Weber way back in the day in the fourth final of the game, he called a timeout. And when he called that timeout, he ended up losing the game. And he lost the game because he forgot that he, he, he was out of timeouts. Why? Anybody ever show up and make a stupid blunder at the end of the exam? Why? because your focus bucket is empty. And when you need it, at that very moment, there's nothing for it. So how can you think about repetition, 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 and make things routine? You ever notice there's a reason Steve Jobs wears the same black turtleneck when he was alive, the same blue jeans, the same white shoes. Bill Belichick, the sports guy, always dresses in the same hoodie. Certain people take the same way to work, eat the same breakfast, always the same routine. I can't do it. But those people know that the less they attend to something novel before their day starts, the fuller their day starts with their focus bucket. And so for some of you, that might mean I'm the kind of person that can eat the same breakfast every day. I'm going to take the same way to work. I'm going to dress the same way. I'm going to wear the same clothes. But for others, it might be I'm going to eliminate distractions. I'm going to eliminate distractions so that I don't have to attend to them. Because if there's distractions in my life, they're going to take my focus and my energy. And when I need it for something important and critical, my bucket will be empty. Start to think what those distractions might be. They might be the traffic jam. They might be where you chose to live. They might be the three bus passes. They might be a toxic relationship. They might be somebody that you know, like, I just got to stay away from that friend. 
but you can't get to repetition, 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 which is honing the practice, or you can't get to what we call the pre-performance routine if you're not thinking about what those things are. Take the time right now to think about those distractions. For me, I know my distraction is my phone, right? For some people, it's TV. Some people, it might not be, it might be, you know what, I got to eat the same thing. Once you've got the novel piece of the repetition, repetition, you've got these other pieces. I want to really remind you that self-confidence is how you choose to interpret failures, setbacks, all the things we talk about. Grit, resilience, whatever the fancy word is. If you're in the mental health field, you might call it hardiness, but how we choose to interpret feedback and failure will really dictate our academic success. What do I mean by that? Let me tell you a story. There's a guy that I once coached. So as I came over from a school in the Iowa, I coached in the state for a long time. I'm a national champion. So of course, when you're a national champion, I coach, and then I go to the Olympic qualifiers, I qualify my country for the first ever. They never qualified for the Olympics. I'm like, yeah. So I get a promotion. And I go and I become the director of athletics at Toronto Metropolitan University. Back then it was Ryerson. And I don't know what the heck I'm doing because all I was in charge of one person, a budget that was like $10,000. And all of a sudden they put me in charge of 30 people and a budget that ended in the word billions. Oh my God, imposter syndrome. I didn't feel like I belonged. I didn't feel like I was good enough. Anybody out here feeling ever like that on grad school days? Like, oh my God, what the hell am I doing here? All the rest of the people are so smart. And I just said, okay, 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 don't open your mouth. I remember we're renovating Maple Leaf Gardens and they'd be asking me, okay, we got to do the fit up and this and that. It's like, what do you think, Dr. Joseph? Uh, let me get back to you on that. Let me consult with my people. And I go home and I Googleize it. And say, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> right? I'm like, oh my God, because I felt like an idiot. So you know what? I'm, the, I'm, I'm not the one time, I'm not the two time. I'm the six time coach of the year. I'm going to coach soccer for the athletic department so I can strut my stuff and anybody could know how good I am. Because when you're feeling like you don't know, you go back to what you're good at, right? It's like, I got to put on, it's like me putting on my best uniform. So I put it on, I'm ready. I coach soccer. And in those first two weeks, bam, bam, boom, boom, boom. I lose more games than my previous five years combined. And I'm like, holy sugar sticks. And I don't know what to do. I want to push my ego button and go back to Iowa where I was the king of my fight though. I felt like, oh my, because all I felt like told you guy, you're not so good, you fancy American with the swagger. This is how we do it in Canada. This is why we can't win at Ryerson. And I felt the shame of it. Now, has anybody ever been to Ryerson with the quad at Kerr Hall? Right? There's some trees around there, the pine trees. I hear this voice, Coach Mun. And I look over when I'm practicing. And this specimen of a black man walks out, chiseled. like He's wearing a shirt too tight for him. And he's like, he just walks. He goes, ripple, ripple. Ripple, ripple. <laughs> Coach Mun, I read the secret. I put it on my dream board. I want to come play for you and help you win a championship. And I look to the skies like Jesus is like manna, like Moses. And I'm like manna falling from the heavens. Like, thank you, Lord. Thank you. Because over here, I got these skinny legged guys. They're like, oh, like, what is happening here? These folks aren't good. I don't want them. No way. And he's like, oh, yeah, show up to practice. What's your name? Kyle. I'm like, thank you, Kyle. Kyle shows up to Lamport Stadium the next day, ripple, ripple. <laughs> and he goes tearing down the field like a black blur of Usain Bolt lightning. Zoom! He kicks the ball. <laughs> and guess what? He's a donkey. He's terrible. All of that is like all for show and no go. I was like, oh my God, okay, maybe he's been in the air. And I watch him. He gets a ball. It's coming across the air. And he's watching it. He's watching it. He gets the head and boom. And it's like he has an octagon on his head. I don't know where it's going to go. And I'm like, oh, bloody hell. But, you know, I'm a dad. I'm a coach. I look at him. He has these big puppy dog brown eyes. Coach, man, did I make the team? And I am a brother. And he's a brother. So not yet, Kyle. I'm a coward. I make him the equipment manager. Because I am. That's what I am. I don't have the heart to break in spirit and crush his dream. And he becomes our equipment manager. I'm like, ah. He practices, he gets better, he works hard, he carries uniforms, he shines ball, he carries stuff, and he's getting better. And the next year, bam, he shows up to practice lighter, faster, stronger. He's worked really hard. Guess what? Yeah, he still doesn't make the team. <laughs> it's no happily ever after story, but he comes and says, Coach, man, what do I got to do to make this team? I said, over here, Kyle, I got a stud waiting in the wings. This is an all-Canadian right here, my best player yet. I only need three, and there's a player over there that's better than both of them that's coming up in the wings. It's almost impossible for you to make this team. What do you think Kyle hears? 
You're saying there's a chance though, eh, Kobe? <laughs> Confident, self-confident, gritty, resilient people will interpret feedback a little bit differently. Now, I know you folks might be thinking, that is delusional. What is happening here? That shouldn't be going on. Like, that's craziness talk happening. But I don't know. Thank God he doesn't show up the next year. Now I've been coaching three years. We're starting to make progress. We're starting to make some movement here. I can see things starting to happen. And guess what now? The final year I call up, I said, hey, we're starting to make some progress. I need some work here. Can you send me a player? I call up a coach in Scarborough. Can you send me a guy? I got a guy. I got a guy. I'll send it to you. I'm like, okay, who you got? Well, I, I, I only need one player. No, I got three. And I need a center back. Center back is that last player, the one that holds the line, that protects the goal. I, every center back I coach has played for England, the national team, all American, all Canadian. So this is my bread and butter. Okay. So I remember I'm sitting at Lamport Stadium. It's like this. It's like, Turning back in the ground, I see these three guys walking forward slowly. I just see a silhouette slowly, slowly. It's like an Elvis commercial. A little less conversation, a little bit of effort. <laughs> it's like silhouette. It's like a video. And then the sun opens up, and who do I see in the middle? Kyle. My oh, God, dang it. I don't want to cut this guy again. I'm a dad. I, know. I cut him once, twice, three times. No. Four years later. 50 players, though, are down to 25. Guess who's still there? Kyle, 25 down to 12. Guess who's still there? Kyle, 12 down to the final six. Who's there? Oh, my God, Kyle. We're down to three. Kyle's still there, and I'm only going to take one. And guess what? After four years of hard work, grit, persistence, everything you get, guess who makes the team? No. <laughs> no, no, no. I want a happy ever after story, too. But no. And they're looking at me like little birds. We're getting ready to play Syracuse. And I don't have the heart to tell them because there's only three. It's like, you made it and you two didn't. Okay, sorry. So I wait. I'm going to like, oh, folks, we're going to go to Syracuse. I'll give one of you a show and you'll meet us up there. Okay. Now, before I tell you the rest of the story, I want to remind you who I am. Not one time, not two, not three, not four, not five. Six time legitimate coach of the year. Olympics, check. World Cup qualifiers, check. National championship, world championships, NBA. Olympic, okay, go blah, 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 blah. Take all that, blah, blah, blah. Put it over there. I'm also really, really cheap. As I'm crossing the border, I don't want to hit roaming charges. Ring, ring, ring. I dial the number of the guy I'm supposed to call. Coach Mud, I made the team. I call Kyle by accident. And I have a moment of panic. Uh, 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 Kyle, I want to take a longer look at you, please. Uh, yes, yes, yes. We'd like to take a longer look at you. Meet us in Guelph. Thank you. Goodbye. It's just like, what the hell is wrong with you? I'm like, what am I going to say? I called you by accident? Prank? No. <laughs> I'm only human, okay? I'm only human. I made a mistake. I rectify this. I call the right person. They join us in Syracuse. I'll deal with Kyle later. I don't know what to do. We play Syracuse. We don't smell the board. In fact, we suck it up. We lose 6 nothing. to add injury to insult. My stud center back is out with a head injury for the year. Okay, I got two more. We're okay. I got one here, one here. We only need two. We bounce back. I give my team the marching orders. We got to work. Nash, come on, let's go. We win that game against Hartwick 2-1 with, with a heavy price. My stud sent it back out with a knee injury for two weeks. Okay, okay. Well, I guess I got one, and I can put somebody else in the position. I'll find somebody. I'm a good coach. I'll, I'll find somebody else. I put you in the game. I'm getting ready to put you in the game. I tell you the night before. You said, yeah, yeah, you're excited. And you go to eat at the food place and food wood. This is not a Netflix documentary special. This is the real truth. I'm like, what the hell? I got nobody. I look to the left. I look to the right. I got fly footprints. I got a guy that looks like pig pen. I got nothing to do. I got no choice. I got to put Kyle in the game. A guy who's only there by accident, who doesn't belong, who's not good enough, who's going to screw it up. So what do I say? I say, Kyle, get in the game. Get in the game, Kyle. Get in the game. And Kyle goes in the game like bloody hell. He plays like a man possessed. I'm talking, he chases this ball down from behind. He slides his butt on the ground, leaves his skin out there, hooks the goal off the line, saves a goal. He goes in the tackle. Oh, I see his arms and legs. He's like, Gandalf, no man shall pass. It's like, ah. This is like, what is happening here? Little seconds of the game. I see him watch this ball coming across. I see him watch him, watch him, push up, turns, hikes, bam, boom, scores one nothing. Like a scene out of Chariots of Fire, if you're old enough to know that show, they carry him off the field. <sighs> I got no choice. I have the man of the match. In my 25-year coaching career, I've only had one undefeated season. It also happened to be a
I don't think he would qualify given that he's a surgeon. You were right to take on this role. How do you see this? I don't see myself as a surgeon. Uh, I'm almost here to say, <laughs> what's the moral of that story? And thank you for nobody typing in the chat or giving it up saying, what a bad judge of coaching you are, buddy. Holy <laughs> Jesus. If there was anybody that should have told Kyle he wasn't good enough. Remember the blah, 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 blah guy here? Blah, 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 blah. It should have been this guy. For all you out there, who do you choose to give your power away to? Who will tell you you're not good enough? Some professor you don't respect, some lab technician, some ex-boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, wife. Some lady from the grocery store, some guy from the post office. Who do you give your power away to? There'll be enough people telling you that you're not good enough, that you don't belong, that you got here by accident. You got the job because you're a woman. You got the job because you're black. Oh, you only got in here because of equity deserving. I don't know why you're there. You just got here because of whatever. You don't belong. You're not good enough. Stop it. Do not give your power away to those people. In fact, get away from those people who will tear you down. Because they will erode the very thing that makes you magical and special. You'll start to believe them. Those thoughts will influence your beliefs and those beliefs will influence your actions and this self-deprecating cycle will start. And you'll be afraid to put your hand up. You'll be afraid that my idea might be wrong. You'll start to be less than an other. Who do you give your power away to? And equally as important, get away from those people that will tear you down. And sometimes those are boundaries and parameters because those people are in your family or they're in your work group or you're in this or whatever. And you have to figure out how will you protect yourself? How will you be good to yourself? Because if you're not careful, your thoughts influence your beliefs, which influence your actions. Let me give an example of that. Felice, come on forward. I asked Felice to come forward and share with me something she is proud of achieving. Anything for 30 seconds to a minute, all right? I don't know if Felice from a hole in the ground, but hopefully she'll stand under this mic and wax poetically about how amazing she is. So you spoke a lot about grit. Yes. So my greatest achievement is knowing you are these one. You guys need to talk louder. The virtual people can't hear you. Okay. So you spoke a lot about grit. And my greatest achievement is knowing when to grit, but also knowing when to quit. All right. So give me something that you did that made you grit, like, like, wow. Um, working really hard over like 10 years in policy and then realizing it didn't make me happy. So quitting it and starting my own business. Bam. All right. Which is your strong, don't go anywhere. Which is your strongest hand, your right hand or your left hand? Uh, my right. All right. Shoulder, feet, feet, shoulder width apart. Hold out your right hand. <laughs> don't let me push it down. Ready? One, two, three. Felice, you are stronger than you look. It's <laughs> like a little skinny arm here. It's like it's like fire. All right, Felice. I want you to share just with us. I didn't prep her for this. The last time you screwed up and you really cost your team, and you're just like, oh my God, you felt really bad. Tell me when you got into your head. Hold. I don't want you to share that one. I just want you to close your eyes and I'm gonna whisper something to you. Close your eyes. I just asked her to think about the last time she cried, the last thing that she would never share that really made her feel less than. All right, ready? Don't let me push your hand down when people feel, make you feel like that. I that you're no good. Right? <laughs> right? Like you're, like you're no good and you just can't do it. Ready? Don't let me push your hand down when people yeah. tell you you're never going to be anything. Oh, God. <laughs> Wait a minute. What just happened there? Oh, does anybody know police here? Let me give you three compliments. When I asked for something, somebody to put their hand up, Felice was like, yes, I'm your, I'm your person. When I said, who is capable and willing to do this? Felice said, yes. Now repeat after me, please. I am the captain of my ship. I am the captain of my ship. I am the master of my fate. I am the master of my fate. I deserve to be here. I deserve to be here. Nobody outworks me. Nobody outworks me. Give her a ripple. Close your eyes. Ready? Set. Go. <laughs> All right. Well done. So, what is that about? Is that a follow trip? 
in my old days, if I hooked you up to my lab, what would happen? Where would you see your brain firing? What would happen? What would the stress hormones and the molecules and all the things and all, it's not about strength, myosin and actin filaments, all those science words. No, that is what we think we become. In Harvard, Lubomowski, a 2006 study, showed the negative effects of negative thinking, what it happens. It takes away your creativity, your innovation, your ability to close deals. And when that negativity comes, you need to do this. Thoughts, center, physical cue, get out of there, stop it. Deep breath and reset. Watch the professional athlete. When they make a mistake, they point to the person who made the great pass. They take a mistake, they... because that is in the past. You'll hear us in sports psychology say, live in the moment. You're gonna get bad tests. Absolutely, let it go. You're gonna screw up and get the wrong answer. Let it go. If you're in the middle of a test and you're like, oh my God, I don't think I can do this. Oh my God, oh my God, I don't belong here. Oh my God, I don't belong here. You know what's going to happen? You will act as if, and that will become a self-fulfilling prophecy. So self-confident people stop the negative thought and they replace it with a positive affirmation. If you've watched my TED talk, you know my three. Number one, I am the captain of my ship and the master of my fate. Number two, nobody outworks. Number three, I can learn anything. Lubomowski will say that if you're in three affirmations a day and you're in the creative world, you're 17 and 19% more productive. Whoa. And if you're in the complex problem solving world, logistics, analytics, engineering, diagnostic, labs, anything where you have to find the needle in the hair stack, where you have to analyze, where your critical analysis have counts, that you're 27 to 29% faster in solving complex problems. But if you're in the revenue generation world, the dineros, the cabbage, the dollars, the moolah, you increase your revenue 30%, those that use three affirmations a day. There's enough people telling me I'm no good, that I don't belong, that I got the job by accident, that I don't, why am I going to stop? Why am I going to tell myself, stop and replace it with those affirmations? Realize my affirmations and say, I am the smartest person in the room. No, I can learn anything. I'm going to be a billionaire. No. I can work towards my goals. I can learn anything. Practice these three affirmations and put them someplace. By the mirror, by the walls, by the bookstore, wherever it is that you go and see every day. Today I talked about the power of repetition. I talked about the power of self-talk. I talked about the power of getting away from the people who will tear you down. Oh my goodness. But if there's one thing that you can do right now that's easy and simple, is just remind yourself of your greatness and what you did to get here. Write yourself a brag sheet, a personal letter to yourself, and read it over and over again. When I came off my kingdom of Iowa, my little fight, the town of a thousand people with no stoplights, no bar, no oh man, did I ever feel like I wasn't good enough? And I brought out my letter and I read it to myself. Dear Ivan, you chose the right woman to marry. Your goal was a PhD before 40. You did it. You wanted to go to the Olympics. Congratulations. You raised three great children. There's things that you're proud of achieving because you need to remind yourself of your greatness because there'll come a time when you will feel like you're not good enough. Take the moment, bring out that letter over and over again. I read that letter till it was like paper, but that helps build your confidence. Last and not certainly not least, one of the most important things about building your academic success is about building that dopamine and hope and optimism in you is thank somebody who helped you get here. When you take a moment to write a letter or to pick up the phone and call somebody, it spikes your dopamine level. It spikes the things that build your grit, your resilience, your hope and happiness. In fact, they have found that 30 days later, those elevated levels of dopamine of spike are still in your system. Nobody got those. Somebody helped you get here. So remember that. Nobody does anything alone. At the end of the day, this next six months, nine months, 12 months, two years, five years, whatever the journey is for you, is going to go like this. There's going to be times where you want to put up your hand and say, Help. there's going to be times where you want to say, I quit. I guarantee you this, as somebody who's been there, who's had a huge, I felt the same. And I made sure that the people around me were the people who cared for me, who loved me unconditionally. And when I was feeling down, picked me up. When we talk about confidence, it's this, the genuine belief, genuine belief in your ability to accomplish the task at hand, not perfection, 
that is. Those things happen. Yeah. You can't control them. At the end of the day, if you only take one thing from this talk, take this. Believe in yourself and the rest of the world will too. Thanks for having me.